What happens if a parent is your God? Let's explore this on today's Ask a Shrink. So growing up during your childhood, it could have been that one parent or both parents were your God. Now, what does that mean when I call them a God? Well, it means that you were taken over, emotionally smothered, or somehow otherwise abused in such a manner that it wiped away your identity and you bowed sometimes literally and symbolically to your parents or parent. Parents are playing the God role in terms of I can beat you when I want, I can have sex with you when I want, I can take you over emotionally when I want, I call the shots, it's all about me as the parent, and you're my little slave or servant. Now, gods can come in many forms to a child. Quite often, it can be a narcissistic parent who makes it be all about them. The child is taught very early, worship me, worship me, worship me. Or it's done by various forms of abuse. For example, sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, where the child is conditioned and led and maybe gaslit and taught that you better respect your God here. I'm the God, I'm the parent, and don't go thinking for yourself. By the way, there may not be a real self there anyhow because that's in the process of being wiped away during the childhood trauma. So we all know on some level that can happen if you're familiar with psychology at all, especially emotional incest. The parent is adored with emotional incest that involves placing the child on a false pedestal, so to speak, And so the child feels like a god in a way, but they're realizing that their godness, their godliness comes because they have to honor their god. So I'm treated well and I'm held in special esteem if I adore my parent, if I people please them, give them whatever they want, put on any kind of act, be their little mini husband or mini wife. You're in performance mode all the time. So ironically, we have a little god worshiping a bigger god. Now it becomes even more traumatic later on when all this crumbles down for the child and the parents. The child begins to see through the facade, hopefully as they get older. What the hell is this about? Why are my parents making it be all about them? Why have they abused me? Why was I so taken advantage of? But also for the parent, if they're not being worshiped anymore, what's going on here? My kid's breaking away. Why are they rebelling? They never talked to me this way before. So now their godliness is being challenged. And now maybe they're going to have to deal with their own stuff by looking inward as to why they abused or somehow emotionally took over a child. As the child grows up, whoa, this can be tough because what you're left with as you begin to explore this, and hopefully this is in a therapist's office, is you see how much self-hatred you have. You're beginning to realize that your values, your truths, your beliefs are different from your parents. But they controlled you, gaslit you, manipulated you, beat you, had sex with you, emotionally smothered you, whatever it is that robbed you of the ability to understand what you're all about. So now with the inadequacy, the guilt, the confusion, the child begins, the child now an adult, by the way, begins to realize I hate myself on some level. There's self-loathing here. I'm so critical with myself. Well, why wouldn't they be? Those are the messages they got from the parents, the abusive parent. Of course, a little kid is going to grow up thinking there's something wrong with me. Of course, when in reality, there's nothing wrong with them at all, but they don't know that yet. Now, these feelings of self-hatred, self-criticism are tough to look at. It's not easy emotional work, but it's the first step towards healing ourselves. Another abusive form that could sneak in for the child to feel this way as they grow up, which sometimes gets ignored, are parents who want their child to be perfect. Perfectionism is expected. Now, somebody could say, well, that's, that's not abuse. Well, if the result is, and it usually is, that the child feels I'll never be good enough, no matter what I do for my parents, they just want more and more and more. There's an inadequacy there now because of the parents. Growing up this way, the child develops a really harmful thought process or narrative about themselves, how they believe themselves to be. I'm the one who is supposed to tolerate whatever I'm getting, whatever form of abuse they're getting. Therefore, I believe on an unconscious level, my parent is my God. I bow to them. I did what they wanted. And then part of the emotional work later on is you realize they're not gods at all. And then that can pop that fantasy bubble you may have. You're no longer viewing them as a God. So part of the work is learning to forgive yourself, not being so hard on yourself. Give yourself compassion. 
You've been a rock star in enduring what was done to you by your parent or parents. So as you're dealing with the inadequacy, as you're figuring this all out, it's common for people to have shame, regret, bitterness, anger, depression may set in. This is very similar to a kid who's been bullied at school. The stages of grief and related feelings will be similar to a child who's been abused by their own parents. When a child is now an adult and out on their own, what's very common is they look for external validation because the parents, the gods, gave them the external validation. Everything was focused on the parents and trying to avoid the abuse. Or in the case of emotional incest, the abuse could feel good, at least initially. It's all very confusing. But either way, the loss of the identity means we're focusing on others for our self-worth. So we have to learn to turn that around and, of course, understand what we're all about and we find our own self-validation in life. Seeking external validation impacts the ability for happiness because we're relying on the external. Well, at some point, we're left with ourselves. Please leave me some comments below if you've been raised in this manner where your parents were gods. What's that like for you? What stage are you at now in your life as you're dealing with this? Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.